Our news is brought to you by Alive. Believe in best. Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up on our news tonight. The Prime Minister weighs in on the Chief Medical Officer's warning against large political gatherings. The Chief Justice discusses the need for a sexual offenses court. Are changes on the way at the Labor Department? And putting the pieces together, East Grand Bahama residents talk rebuilding efforts. Welcome to our news weekend and thanks for joining us. I'm Georgie O'Bain. Topping news tonight. Days after the chief medical officer indicated that political gatherings and other social events should not be happening during the COVID-19 pandemic, the prime minister and party supporters canvassed the St. Anne's community. Fired up and ready to rock. Yes, Let's go. We're ready. We're ready. The Prime Minister, St. Anne's candidate Adrian White, and Minister of Immigration Ellsworth Johnson today opening the St. Anne's constituency office. The ceremony was followed by a walkabout in the Johnson Road area where most residents seemed welcoming. You are doing such a wonderful job. Thank you very much. Very pleased with you. Keep up the good work. We're going to win again. Prime Minister. In person. Yes. You want to TV. In person. In person. Rock with Doc. I think you're doing a good job. Uh, I haven't voted, well, I didn't vote in the last time. Uh, but I think you're doing a good job. And uh, I'll vote for you. Fewer party supporters joined the walkabout than previous party events. The PM was asked about the recent backlash these political events have received from the chief medical officer and the Christian Council president. But you would note that we were spaced out uh, quite a distance, and rather than bungle, um, we had a line of at least about three, four hundred foot. So individuals were way ahead, some were way behind. And you'd note that when we visited any homes, there would not have been more than two, three at max, and we would have been spaced out again, um, wearing our masks, etc. Most important thing is keeping adequate social distancing. The Progressive Liberal Party issued a statement that the party would review its campaign practices following the CMO's comments. However, the Prime Minister says once safety protocols are adhered to, everything is fine. And you would note that uh, if there were any handshakes, etc., um, sanitizers were used, and if any of the constituents um, did not have any masks, it was provided for them to ensure safety for everybody. The Chief Justice revealing that the judiciary is considering the development of a sexual offenses court here in the Bahamas due to the special nature and sensitivity surrounding those particular cases. Sexual offenses um, in, in a well-administered court system deserve special treatment because of the nature of the offense. The first thing is that, that best practices um, suggest that, that you really should try to dispose of sexual offenses uh, cases within a period of 12 months. Now that's a relatively short period of time for the disposal of a criminal case compared to everything else. According to the Chief Justice who appeared on our TV show On the Record, there are several reasons why sexual offense cases need to be brought to a close in a shorter time span, including the probability that the rate of conviction tends to decrease. The reason for that, of course, is the impact on the victim, all right, which is very traumatic, um, witnesses, obviously um, are affected um, and the longer it takes a system to bring a sexual offenses case to trial the 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 rate of conviction tends to decrease Right, that's what the empirical data seems to suggest. According to Maury, the judiciary is heavily considering the establishment of a sexual offenses court in the near future. The takeaway of that is that you need to, you need to, to put some special emphasis on sexual offenses cases in order to try and get rid of them within that period of time. Many times they involve minors, um, and, and of course that requires special treatment. So we are thinking seriously about establishing a sexual offenses court. Um, now, essentially, it's, it's a criminal court, but it'll be a court which will have a special emphasis on sexual offense cases. 
Police here in New Providence need your help locating 78-year-old Altman Sweeting. The senior citizen was last seen on Thursday night at his home on Dunmore Street. He is described as having a dark complexion, slim build, and stands at about 5 feet 9 inches. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Criminal Investigation Department at 502-9991 or 2. Well, some East Grand Bahama residents are still struggling to rebound following Hurricane Dorian, which devastated some parts of the island in 2019. Amputee Edwin Kemp says he's had a tough time rebuilding, but it's keeping him upbeat. I swam through six, almost seven foot of water on crutches, one leg. You know. Uh, How have you been getting by after Dorian? Oh, it's been, it's been kind of rough, but you know. Um, the government is trying, doing its best to help everybody, and uh, you know that's, you know, you just might be, be strong, you know, and uh, it'll, it'll take, it'll take care of itself. He's not alone, as Rocky Creek resident Maxie Knoll says they have had little help rebuilding. She said she's been doing her best, but frequent closures have slowed down the rebuilding process. We're going through a little rough time now. Because the little hurricane come and wipe out everything. So we start to rebuild slowly. But we don't have much help. You know, every time they open to get your materials, they close down, they close down, they close down. Because right now I'm waiting on stuff for my place to fix. Noel says she's thankful to God that she didn't lose any family members in the storm, but the loss of goods is still devastating. Her son, who is now in school, lacks supplies. The pandemic has already made the difficult situation even tougher for the family. She says she's in need of everything from groceries to home repairs. There's no job now. I haven't worked now for the past six, seven months. So I try to, you know, look around. But nothing is happening, no jobs right now. Nothing. So the little help can help. Whatever you can help, we'll take it. You know, if we could get a little bit more help, we could use it. We could get help with the house, financial needs, we need clothes, we need grocery. So who could bless us? Bring the blessing to us. And Governor General C.A. Smith conveying condolences on behalf of the Bahamas to Buckingham Palace following the death of Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, who died at the age of 99 on Friday. Smith said in a statement, Our thoughts and prayers are with Her Majesty and the royal family at this time. Meanwhile, opposition leader Philip Davis remembered the prince as an active and prominent figure during our national development, adding he frequently visited our islands in the years past and remained a friend of the Bahamian people. In a statement on Friday, Buckingham Palace said it is with deep sorrow that Her Majesty the Queen announced the death of her beloved husband. His Royal Highness passed away peacefully at Windsor Castle. The Labour Director is hopeful that some much-needed improvements are coming to the department in order to improve its ability to provide more information to the public. Our Bethany McDermott reports. The Department of Labor is unable to provide in-depth and specific labor statistics according to Labor Director John Pinder, who is hoping that will change soon. The government is now empowering another agency, uh, forming a, a new agency that will have all these stats and all these statistics, and then we'll be able to you know, better give uh, the press and the general public Information. He said he wishes the department was empowered to give specific percentages on unemployment, like how many students graduate each year, how many of those students are in search of employment, and how many students go straight to university. We can run some percentage of what percent of students normally go off to university, what percent of students go into trade, and what percent of students are looking for a job. So that we will know, well, you know, if um, we need to find 40% jobs every year for students coming out of university, and those, by extension, who did not, who finished high school and are not looking to go to university or didn't go or is not qualified to go. You need to know who's unemployable. During his contribution to the budget debate in 2019, Education Minister Jeff Lloyd said 70% of students leaving school go directly into the workforce. The Labor Director said more should be done to urge every graduate to have a trade. Even with the educational system, I think we still have to do more to encourage every Bahamian student coming out of university, I mean coming out of high school, to have a trade. You know, so if you don't go to university and you come out as a semi-skilled plumber or semi-skilled carpenter, semi-skilled electrician or semi-skilled welder, 
at least you can start to work on a job as a helper or an assistant until such time as you get your certification at BTDI or one of these vocational institutions. He said moving forward, the entire system needs to be more proactive. He said it would also call for more advanced technology and more manpower. Because a lot of the, the surveys are done door to door, surveys um, are done. There's an international standard that um, we have to follow as relates to taking statistics. Reporting for Our News, I'm Bertha McDermott. Well, still to come on our news, the story of an extraordinary toddler in need of your help. And later we talk to two Bahamian sisters in a league of their own. Stay with us. Oh, I was just going to say, I want to hey, see you keep this on when you get not <laughs> I want to see it. Wait, they just went right by you, but I'm crazy. I get locked up. Don't worry. I hey, still here. All I, I just happy. Up. I just happy to see that they went by you and then pull you over. Now, that that would have been a be good TV. That would have been good. The Charlie Bahama Show, this Monday night, 7 p.m. on our TV, channel 212. Yeah. Basketball is back, baby, and so is NBA League Pass, only with Rev Trio. Sign up for Rev Trio today and enjoy NBA League Pass absolutely free, along with incredible prizes, including a brand new 50 inch smart TV, NBA gear, and more. With tons of prizes and gear, signing up for Trio is the best on and off court move this year. Just call 601 8992 or visit www.rev.bs slash promotions slash Trio. Sign up for Rev Trio today and enjoy NBA League Pass absolutely free. You're watching our news. Welcome back. Well, the first cohort of participants of the Citizen Security and Justice Programs Revive Academy received their certificates of completion on Friday. The program, which was funded by the Inter-American Development Bank and managed by the Ministry of National Security, focused on equipping participants with soft skills needed on the job. During this comprehensive program, you all have learned skills such as communication, emotional intelligence, problem solving, time management, and also have been a part of the Bahamas Technical and Vocational Institute in terms of the environment within which you operated. We often hear a stress on soft skills these days. Um, to our students who have taken the uh, skills, the soft skills program, uh, they complement the kinds of technical skills that we offer at BTVI. BTBI Chairman Kevin Baston told participants that the proper soft skills are crucial for fostering dynamic work environments. Because while your technical and academic skills can get you a foot in the door, it is those soft skills which will keep you in the door. No matter how technically skilled, no matter how technically skilled you might be, if your time management skills are off, if your communication skills are wanting, or if your workplace ethics are below the threshold of integrity, begin numbering your days at that organization. The mother of a two-year-old with a severe case of scoliosis is in dire need of your help. As doctors say her son requires life-saving surgery. She said her story with our news. Just one look at baby Israel Forbes and you can't help but notice his fighting spirit. The last of his mother's four children, Israel was born with a severe case of infantile scoliosis. When I was pregnant with Israel, I went to do the ultrasound and they noticed the curvature in the spine, judging from the um, ultrasound image. And they told me that, okay, they were going to monitor it and see what would happen when he was born. Now, when he was born, that's when they saw the lump and they said that they will run some tests to confirm to see what it was. And after running the tests, they diagnosed him as infantile scoliosis. His case is so severe that it is already hindering not only his mobility, but also his ability to breathe. Anything above 10 degrees is what they would diagnose as scoliosis. As it stands now, Israel scoliosis degree is 116 degrees. So this has Israel in a life compromising position because um, the doctor said if it's not treated, um, it puts his organs at risk and as the ribs grow and presses more on the lungs, even now he's presented with difficulties breathing. 
it hasn't been easy on the mother of four, who has had to quit her job due to frequent doctor visits with Israel. And the cost of those doctor visits has taken a financial toll on the family's finances. Over the um, proximity of Israel going because he hasn't had the instrumental rod and he's had the medicasting. Each medicasting would have been about twenty, thirty thousand dollars So Israel had about almost six, so that would run up to almost $200,000. That is in the um, MRIs and the uh, x-rays, you know. The, the cost of the surgeries has really had us burnt out. And the financial hardships aren't done yet. The life-saving surgery that Israel is in dire need of won't be cheap. Well, the doctors at Chop Philadelphia, the surgery is estimated to be $1.4 million. What the doctors are recommending is the hollow traction gravity um, method and also the instrumentation of the rod in his back. You know, what the hollow traction gravity is about is like a pins in the head and what it does it manipulates the spine to stretch gently because of the curvature of Israel the level of the degree of the curvature the doctor said it cannot be rushed so that's where the hollow traction comes in Forbes says the disease needs more recognition here in the Bahamas she's asking anyone that can help to contact her I'm asking everyone to purchase a ribbon and a pin and all proceeds go to Israel's medical fund. Yeah, you can reach me at um, 1242-429-0240 um, or you can gmail me at picolaforbes at gmail.com You know, um, any questions, any queries you have, I'll be glad to answer. Like Israel um, fundraiser theme is Israel's new spine. Let's, I'm asking you, let's come together as one Bahamas and let's give Israel a new spine. But when our news comes back from the break, meet sisters in a league of their own. Plus how the Grand Bahama Power Company is helping customers to take charge. We have the details when our news returns. Oh, I was just going to say, I want to see you keep this on when you get knocked off. <laughs> I want to see oh, it. Wait, they just went right by you, but I'm crazy. I get lost up, y'all don't worry. I'm still here. All I, I just happy, I just happy to see that they went by you and then pull you over. Now, that would have been, been good TV. That would have been good. The Charlie Bahama Show, this Monday night, 7 p.m. on our TV, channel 212. Yeah. Basketball is back, baby, and so is NBA League Pass, only with Rev Trio. Sign up for Rev Trio today and enjoy NBA League Pass absolutely free, along with incredible prizes, including a brand new 50 inch smart TV, NBA gear, and more. With tons of prizes and gear, signing up for Trio is the best on and off court move this year. Just call 601 8992 or visit www.rev.bs promotions trio. Sign up for Rev Trio today and enjoy NBA League Pass absolutely free. We've heard of famous sisters from Venus and Serena to Mary-Kate and Ashley. Well, the Miller sisters are getting ready to take over the universe, literally. One sister preparing for the Olympics and another is preparing for pageantry. Our Kyle Joaquin has more in tonight's edition of A League of Their Own. I'm prepared. I'm, I'm ready to take on the universe. A model, ambassador for the Bahamas Red Cross, and coach of a family-owned track club, Shante Miller has been blazing a trail of her own. Good job, Kale. Good job, Kenneth. All the way through my court. But now she's taken on a new role. The young Bahamian woman is now in the final stages of preparation to take on dozens of other contestants and represent the Bahamas at Miss Universe. It's a wild ride, and I have to ensure that my body looks looks right. So. It's a lot of training, like I said, early mornings, late nights, from the gym, from jogging to the gym, to interview, makeup, hair, runway, it's a lot. No stranger to the runway, Shantae has been putting in the hours and days of work, all in hopes of representing her country well. Mindset is, you know, all or nothing. I, I want the crown. 
I want the Bahamas to have its first. Forget top 21. I want the Miss Universe crown. And one of her biggest supporters is none other than Olympic gold medalist Shawnee Miller-Rebo, who to Shantae is just sister. Let me just say I'm so proud of Shantae as well. Um, you know, I've, she's my sister. I, I always want to see her succeed in anything that she sets her mind to. And, you know, whenever she sets her mind to something, she goes at it really hard. And so I'm just really proud of, of um, the person that she's become so far. And I'm so excited for the rest of her journey. But like I said, yeah, I'm really excited for her with this Miss Universe pageant. And I think she's really going to shock the world and um, make the Bahamas proud. For Shawnee, training is underway as well. But hers is a bit different. The track star is preparing for this year's Summer Olympics in Japan. I'm really excited right now. Um, everything's going really well. The Olympics are on for right now. And so, yeah, we're, we're really excited and we're training really hard right now. Um, looking forward to it and hoping to bring home another gold medal for the, for the Bahamas. For the sisters and best friends, family is everything. Well, for a long time, it was just Shanae and I um, for about 12 years, I want to say. A little, a little less. Like, oh, that's bad. We should know this. Yeah, because I'm 10 years old than so. <laughs> yeah, so. For a long time, it's just been Shanae and I. Um, you know, I'm the eldest. A lot of people get us confused, but I am the eldest. She may be taller, but I'm the eldest. Um, <laughs> yeah, we were just, my, my family is, we're, we're a close knitted family. And the entire Miller clan plans on being in Florida next month to support Shantae as she goes for the crown and title of Miss Universe. She's such a loving, caring, uh, and friendly person, and so. Yeah, I'm rooting for her all the way. Um, she's worked so hard just to get to this point where she's at right now, and I'm so excited for her journey. And yeah, we're all sitting back and waiting uh, for, for the Miss Universe pageant to come so we can watch her take home the crown. The 69th edition of Miss Universe will be held Sunday, May 16th at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. One of the Olympics of pageantry and one of the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, right? That would be epic. Let's make it happen. With this edition of A League of Their Own, I'm Kyle Joaquin. The long, hot summer months are coming up, but Grand Bahama Power Company is working to help customers understand how to save big on their power bills by making small changes around their homes. Our Christina Dragovich tells us more. You may be saving double digits by making your coffee at home, but what's the price of keeping your state-of-the-art appliances plugged in all day? If you're on Grand Bahama, step into Grand Bahama Power Company's Smart Home, an interactive demonstration home that connects you with real-time information on where your dollars and cents go when it comes to power. It mimics our homes in terms of the appliances that are found within our homes. It is able to show you in real time the energy consumption of each appliance that's plugged in or turned on and converted to dollars, which is then converted into your bill. Grand Bahama Power Chief Operating Officer Nikita Mullings says the smart home at the Regent Center is fully equipped with the latest appliances, a hands-on experience to give customers the tools they need to better manage energy consumption. Many of us can be more energy efficient in the type of appliances it is that we're using, even down to from the stove, from the air condition, down to the little light bulbs that's found within our homes. So the next time you get ready to fire up your air fryer, think about how it all adds up. We're currently at 21 cents an hour in this current state. And we're gonna fr um, air fry some chicken wings. We've just turned it on and automatically we've gained some 50, 55 cents just by turning this air fryer on. Some changes may seem small. The Xbox, the Playstations, the tablets, um, our cell phones, our laptops. Those are things that we think is maybe small and minute, but those also can impact the cost on your power bill. So if you're not using them, we encourage customers to unplug devices. But they can have a big impact on your home and your pocketbook. This one here is a 13 sear. This one here is a 16 sear. The SEER is the seasonal energy efficiency rate of your AC unit. All that means is which one you can get more miles to the gallon for. To book a tour of the GBPC's smart home, visit gb-power.com. You may just come up with a few bright ideas. Reporting for our news, I'm Christina Dragovich. Raising autism awareness, that's coming up when our news returns. Oh, oh, oh.
I was just gonna say, I want to see you already. Keep this on when you get knocked off. I want to see oh, it. Wait, they just went right by you, but I'm crazy. Uh, <laughs> I get locked up, y'all don't worry. I hey, still yeah. All I, I just happy. Up. I just happy to see that they went by you and then pull you over. Now, that would have been, been a be good TV. That would have been good. The Charlie Bahama Show, this Monday night, 7 p.m. on our TV, channel 212. Yeah. Basketball is back, baby, and so is NBA League Pass, only with Rev Trio. Sign up for Rev Trio today and enjoy NBA League Pass absolutely free, along with incredible prizes, including a brand new 50-inch smart TV, NBA gear, and more. With tons of prizes and gear, signing up for Trio is the best on and off-court move this year. Just call 601-8992 or visit www.rev.bs slash promotions slash Trio. Sign up for Rev Trio today and enjoy NBA League Pass absolutely free. You're watching our news. Thanks for staying with us. COVID-19 vaccinations continuing on New Providence today. Earlier this week, more groups of Bahamians became eligible to receive the AstraZeneca vaccine, including members of the media. Members of the R News team and R TV teams were among those receiving the first dose of the vaccine this week. First of two vaccinations. Vaccination time, yeah, guys. Vaccination, here this it is. This is going to take care of me. It is and, in. And that's it. And that's it, guys. It's this will be over no time. I know. I'm just going to record <laughs> okay. it for proof. Okay. So your other uh, colleagues wouldn't have anything on you. Exactly. So everyone knows it really happened. Uh, are you ready? Yep. Yeah. yeah, that was a lot easier than I expected. Vaccinations are currently open to teachers, school staff, hospitality workers, students and athletes competing or studying abroad, media personnel and home-bound physically disabled people. Officials believe that some more members of the public will be eligible next week. 67,000 additional doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine are expected to arrive in country next month through the COVAX facility. If you are eligible, you can book your appointment at vax.gov.bs. Well, the Bahamas has come a long way in autism awareness, but still has a good ways to go in terms of acceptance, according to REACH Chairman Dwayne Gibson. The month of April is recognized as Autism Awareness Month. Chairman of the REACH Foundation, Resources and Education for Autism and Related Challenges, says the country still has a long way to go in accepting those with autism and their challenges. I think for sure awareness. I'm going to give the country a lot of, of credit. I think um, persons understand autism, understand that it's a child who has a special need. Um, on the acceptance size, it has to do with opening more doors for our children, being able to access better health care, being able to access more therapies. Um, and then, of course, acceptance is the, the government and other bodies being able to provide these sort of therapies at a reduced cost, if at all possible. An area that is lacking, according to Gibson, is more access to proper education. REACH is pushing for more autism-friendly schooling to be available, not only in the capital, but also on the family islands. Valentine's has a unit, Anatole Rogers has a unit, Stapleton School has a unit, D.W. Davis has a unit, and the government's pushed these, and we push them as well. We do want more classes, and we want it to be spread out in more schools uh, in the Eastern District, in the Southern District, and to extend it to the family islands. That would be something that is needed. Proper therapy is another area that is lacking, but that could all change in the near future, according to Gibson. We're really, really pleased that on a couple of days ago, we, we the Prime Minister uh, is going to improve the subvention to us, and that's going to propel us to look to possibly take on a therapist to try and ourselves take control of our children. So we're really looking forward to, to that opportunity. The events of this month are still on a smaller scale due to the pandemic, but Gibson is encouraging corporate Bahamas to do their part. Normally we would have church service, uh, the lighted up blue ceremony, a walkathon, an open house, but because of uh, the restrictions, we are limiting our celebrations to the lighted up blue. We're looking at having an open house. We're also going to continue with our parent support Zoom meeting this month and 
Yeah, that's going to be it. And then, of course, the T-shirt days, which are our big days where we ask corporate Bahamas to support us by wearing T-shirts in awareness and acceptance of autism. Well, thank you for joining us for our news weekend. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Georgie O'Bain, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow night. Stay safe, Bahamas.